Our diplomatic editor, James Bayes, who's uh, in West Jerusalem. Peter, um, I, I, as I, uh, uh, James, rather, I put it to Peter just then that, that this was a, a, a badly worded ceasefire deal, wasn't it? It was just asking for trouble. Well, I think they spent a lot of time trying to come up with the ceasefire words, something that both sides would agree to. So that's the difficulty, of course. You try and find some wording that you can get everyone to sign up to. And I think in some ways the wording was a little ambiguous. When you look at the actual wording of the text that was released uh, by the United Nations, it actually gives no details at all about what the Israeli military were allowed to do in this ceasefire period, other than the fact that they were allowed to stay in place. It was John Kerry when he spoke uh, to reporters in India. The US Secretary of State said that in his view they were allowed to continue defensive operations behind their front lines, behind the point where they had got to. That of course then begs the question, and you were asking uh, the spokesman of the Israeli military a short time about it, whether the Israeli uh, military had actually advanced from where they were, whether they had gone forward, because that it seems was would be a breach of John Kerry's understanding of this wording uh, that uh, certainly, or, or sort of John Kerry's understanding of the agreement that was in place for this 72 hour humanitarian pause, Adrian. And uh, James, you, you heard me talking to Peter Lerner about uh, the, the soldier that the Israeli military suspects has been uh, abducted, that is missing at the moment. They've, opt uh, uh, they've uh, mounted an operation to try to, to, to recover him. How will, will that uh, be seen there, uh, uh, it will be seen in Israel? Well, I think it's going to be how it's going to be seen by the public in Israel and then how that is going to play into the political decisions that will be made. I think there is anger already in Israel. There's already vigils taking place. There's already a great deal of activity on social media. How will the Israeli leadership respond? One clue. We've had a phone call between Prime Minister Netanyahu and Secretary of State John Kerry. Let me just read you one line from this. Uh, it says that the Palestinians unilaterally and grossly violated the humanitarian ceasefire and attacked our soldiers and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu goes on the consequences of the act the, sorry it says the terrorist organizations as they describe them will bear the consequences of the action of their actions and Israel will take all necessary steps for those who call for our destruction and we'll see quite what those steps are I think in just over an hour's time now Adrian because we're hearing that there is a meeting of Israel's security cabinet likely to take place where they'll discuss Discuss their next move, and most people here are speculating that it'll be some form of escalation. Uh, James, uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas says that uh, that a united Palestinian delegation will travel to Cairo tomorrow, quote, regardless of any unexpected developments. Will this ceasefire have to be renegotiated now before they can try to implement it again? Well, I suppose that is possibly one positive development, that that trip is still going on. Whether the Egyptians are actually going to be there to greet them and whether there will be any sort of talking is not clear at this stage. Mixed messages coming from the Egyptian side. And, of course, the Israeli uh, delegation will only depart from Tel Aviv airport and head to Cairo if they get the go-ahead from Prime Minister Netanyahu. Again, I think, we wait for that Security Cabinet meeting. James, many thanks. James Bays, our diplomatic editor, live there in West Jerusalem.